us now from Big Station WFSU in Tallahassee to tell us more. Hi, Racton. Hey. So you've been reporting in Florida and doing a lot of driving ahead of running into the landfall. What did you see at the pumps? Lots and lots of street I mean, they were all using the gas pumps up on their faces. The stations weren't using shrimp wrap. They were using uh, tape or baggies to cover the nozzles. Now, gas shortages have been a problem leading up to the days uh, ahead of Irma, but it was really bad yesterday. I was driving around in Jacksonville. It took me about an hour of driving around before I could find gas. And on my drive to Dayton, from Orlando to Tallahassee, there were more cars in lines at the pump than on the road, which I guess is a good thing given the circumstances of Irma. So, so how are people able to find gas? How have they been able to find it? You had to be a little bit of, uh, you had to have a little bit of luck, really. Uh, uh, if you saw a bunch of cars at a gas station, you take your chances and try to drive up and see if they still have gas. Uh, I used an app called Gas Buddy, which it showed me a few places that had gas. And one station outside of Gainesville, I was able to get about two and a half gallons of gas before it ran out. And, and a couple of towns over in a town called Live Oak. Uh, I filled up at a gas station called Busy Bee, so I got lucky there. So how are people reacting to this? Is it fraying people's nerves? It is. I think people are really dejected. I mean, if you're driving around at this late stage to get gas, you are used to this by now because you've driven by lots of gas stations, seeing the, the shrink wrap that I was telling you about when lots of gas stations are closed. Um, so people are, are dejected, but you kind of move on because, I mean, there's a storm coming, so you don't have a lot of time to, like, get mad and angry. You just got to find the gas. And before we let you go, Brecken, about 50 seconds left, what are officials saying about how long these shortages might last after the storm is over? You know, it's, it's really tough to say. Now, uh, before the storm uh, hit, uh, Florida Governor Rick Scott said he was working around the clock to bring more gas to the state. Uh, and he also urged people to take only what they need. Um, people are really filling up though. But one gas, one gas station I saw uh, was capping gas at 10, uh, 10 gallons. People could only get two gallons, but the biggest problem is gonna be uh, after the storm hits and people are trying to get home and there's not gonna be any gas at the gas tank because the fuel tanks haven't been able to restock. That's NPR's Bracken Booker joining us from the station WFSU in Tallahassee. Bracken, thank you. Thank you. We've been checking in on people taking shelter from Hurricane Irma. So we're turning now to Ahmed Youssef. He's a volunteer at the Islamic Society of Tampa Bay, and he's with us now from the mosque's hurricane shelter, which opened earlier this week and is housing some 600 people. Mr. Youssef, thanks so much for